So we are inside the Ron Glacier in Switzerland, surrounded by ice, all of it's melting, and I wonder how much longer this tunnel is uh, going to be here for. This man-made ice grotto is a popular tourist destination, but the glacier is retreating each year. So for the past 20 years or so, the glacier has been covered in fabric to limit the melting. The glacier used to cover most of this background. Between 1879 and 2016, the Ron Glacier has retreated 1.4 kilometers. The lake formed over the last decade. Mountain glaciers like this one has been retreating since the end of the Ice Age, but the dramatic melt in recent decades is a strong indicator of human-induced climate change. I'm here doing a collaborative photo project with Simon Norfolk. Whoop! Whoop! We want to capture unique images to help people understand how some adopt to climate change. We're using a high resolution still camera, shooting at dusk and dawn. The balloon holds the strobe lights. You know, sometimes when it's tethered, I just watch it bouncing in the wind, teasing. It's kind of displaying the forces that are playing upon it, the wind in the valley shearing and spinning as it comes off the glacier. To get to the grotto, you enter through the gift shop. Access to that grotto has been controlled by the Carlin family for more than a century. It's a business. They charge people to enter, people see the cave, and it's very inspiring. But literally, this glacier theme park is melting away. My grand-grandfather discovered that uh, he could make an ice cave in the, in the Rhone Glacier. But to preserve their business, they've done something new. They covered part of the glacier with white fabric to stop the melting. Behind us uh, lies this Rhone Glacier, which is retreating a lot. The thermal camera can see temperature and changes in temperature and measure that very accurately. So we see hot rocks when the sun comes out and a very stable glacier at the temperature around zero degrees. And we had to put a rain cover because it was raining in the night. And we did that for around 24 hours, uh, taking a picture every 20 seconds. The lower part is quite dark. These are very small parts of rocks and mud. but these parts absorb more heat and increase the melting of the glacier. And the fabric gets much hotter because it absorbs the heat before it goes down into the ice and, and protects the ice from the, from the heat. Should we go and look at the glacier cave? Oh yeah, that would be great. I mean, here the tourists have the opportunity to see a glacier from inside. And I think it's quite a, a unique opportunity. The costs uh, to uh, protect the ice are, are very high. Only the material I ordered now for this season is more than uh, 60,000 Swiss francs. These blankets are a response to global warming, a way to adapt to climate change on a small scale. But it is not a practical solution for the melt. These blankets only cover 4 square kilometers. The glacier itself is 16.5 square kilometers. It reminds me of, of uh, pictures of the battlefields of the First World War, all those craters and divots and holes filled with water. And it kind of also reminds me in a lot of ways, it's interesting that this is water that behaves like stone, the glacier. We've been looking at this glacier all week and we've been noticing those small yellow dots up there on the middle of the glacier. They're actually small tents and there's some scientists up there and I think we should go and speak to them. How are you doing? Good. If, if you owned the glacier, what would you do with it? Yeah, I think I would try to save it in some ways, but also there is a lot of under, 
ice channels and maybe I would make an under ice uh, like a Mulan safe for the tourists and they can slide down <laughs> to the lake from the top. A water but, slide? <laughs> a water slide but strictly keeping it environmental friendly and not damaging <laughs> the glacier itself. Yep. What do you think of the idea of the tourists coming and then putting the cloth on the glacier and mm -hmm. it, it looks like a big uh, strange science experiment. <laughs> what, what do you think it's, of it? The clothes down at the ice caves in the Rona Glacier, they primarily there before because they want to reflect the sunlight and they're supposed to reduce the melting approximately 50 to 70%. And therefore, the tourists can still enjoy the ice grottoes in the, of the Rona Glacier. Okay, when I walk into that uh, ice cave, I don't feel like this is the safest cave on the planet. Ice caves tend to be ephemeral. They're short-lived and they're melting and they're always changing. So whether you have a man-made cave, like the one in the Rona Glacier, or say a naturally formed one from a channel of water beneath the glacier, these things can be fun to explore, but they're often melting and falling apart and crumbling at the same time. So they can be very dangerous. But with one like the, the Rona Glacier Ice Grotto, which is uh, maintained and is higher at the near the surface, not deep down, they're relatively safe. We've gone past the point where we can stop climate change. The effects are being felt. The question is, how do we deal with this new hot world? How do we adapt to this change? This lake just formed six, seven years ago before there was no lake. And the adaptation is with this fabric is just a small step and it will hold the melting for some years, but I don't think for a lot of years. You know, this is only a tiny portion of this glacier. It's four kilometers long. And when you stand at the ice grotto and you look down into the Hona Valley and, and you say, you know, up in 1850, there at Gletsch, that's where the glacier was. You can see the moraine and you stand there and you see the valley. It's, it suddenly becomes tangible. Just how fast this glacier has been retreating and melting. Glacier melt doesn't just hurt tourism for places like this ice grotto. Globally, glacier retreat will lead to sea level rise and locally it can change weather patterns, which will impact water resources for irrigation as well as drinking water. But I hope that my generation can continue with the ice cave. For next generation, I don't think so. I also see that people in my generation are increasingly aware and motivated and they want to make a difference. So I think these things take time. We've been working with this helium balloon all week. This is Klaus Timon and Simon Norfolk. Reporting from the Rhone Glacier in Switzerland. Over and out. <laughs>